Hey guys, I am so excited to be with you this morning. It is my favorite part of Easter week. Our Bible story this morning is about Jesus resurrecting from the dead and him coming to life and being with his disciples again. So I can't wait to share it with you. Um, we are going to watch our Bible account and then I will be right back. I'll see you in a few minutes. After Jesus had died on the cross, Joseph of Arimathea, a member of the Sanhedrin, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised that Jesus was already dead because it usually took several days for a crucified person to die. Once the soldiers declared that Jesus was dead, Pilate gave permission for Joseph to take the body and to bury it. Joseph took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in a clean cloth and laid it in his own new tomb. He rolled a large stone to cover the opening of the tomb and left. The next day, the chief priests and Pharisees went to Pilate. They were worried. They explained that Jesus had said he would rise from the dead in three days. They asked Pilate to do something so that Christ's disciples could not come at night and take away the body of Jesus and then tell people that Jesus had risen. Pilate granted their request for soldiers to stand guard. The chief priests and Pharisees sealed the tomb in front of the opening of the tomb, still sealed the stone in front of the opening of the tomb, and soldiers were put in place to guard the tomb. After the Sabbath was over, the first day of the week began to dawn, an angel sent from heaven rolled away the stone and sat on it. The soldiers guarding the tomb were fearful, trembling in fear, became like dead men. Mary Magdalene and some other women went to the tomb they were bringing sweet-smelling spices to anoint the body. As they walked along, they wondered who would roll the stone from in front of the tomb. When they arrived at the tomb, they were amazed. The huge stone had already been moved, and an angel was sitting on the stone. When the women saw the angel, he told them not to be afraid. He knew that they had come to see Jesus, who had been crucified. Then he told them the most wonderful news. Christ wasn't there because he had risen from the dead just as he said he would. The angel invited them inside the tomb to see the place where Jesus had been laid. Then the angel told them to go and tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. The women went with fear and joy to tell the disciples. On their way, they met Jesus. He got down on their knees. They got down on their knees and worshiped him. Jesus told them to tell the disciples to go to Galilee and wait for him to meet them there. Isn't that the best story ever? I so enjoy hearing about Jesus being raised on the third day. And that is the real reason why we celebrate Easter. So this year, it doesn't matter that Maybe we don't have a brand new outfit to wear to church or we don't have a church to go to. We're celebrating Easter at our house and, you know, maybe we won't have an egg hunt or family over or that great crawfish boil or barbecue that we usually have. It really doesn't matter because in the end, the only reason we have Easter is because of Jesus and his sacrifice. So I pray that this has been a great week for you, that you have walked with Jesus through his journey in his last days, all the way up to the, the Sunday morning, Easter Sunday. And I pray that as we go through the weekend, that you would celebrate Easter because of Jesus, not because of candy and bunnies and eggs and chocolate. Those are all good things, but I pray that you celebrate Easter because of Jesus. So before we get going any further, let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll work on our Bible workbook. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful gift that you have given us through your death on the cross, Lord. And we, we ask that as we go through this Easter weekend, 
as we celebrate Good Friday and Easter Sunday, Lord, in very different ways than we've ever celebrated them before. We pray that you would be with each and every family represented here, that you would come and be with us in our homes as we celebrate your death, your burial, and your resurrection. And I pray that if there is anyone listening that does not know you, Lord, that does not have a personal relationship with you, I pray that you would be with them, that you would prompt them, that you would tug at their heart, Lord, that they need to know you more. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. All right, so today in your workbook, your Bible workbook, we are on page 189. We're going to also do 191, and you can pull out 193 as well. Now, you're going to notice we're not doing all of these pages, but we're tearing out three pages, 189, 191, and 193. Let's look at page 189 first. We are not doing the front of page 189. We're doing the back. So we're actually looking at page 190. It says under each picture, write the first letter of its name. So clearly that first picture is an elephant. Elephant starts with the letter E. So put an E in that blank. I want you to finish the rest of the page. And then at the bottom, you're going to put the letters you wrote in those blanks, and we're going to read it in just a minute. So before we go any further, pause the video and work page 190 only. Ready? Go. Good. By now, if, you have, um, if you're listening to me, you should have already finished page 190. So on page 190, the question says this, what is God's gift to you? God's gift to you is eternal life through Christ. Eternal life through Christ Jesus. Now let's look at page 191. So it says, cross out each letter that has a twin on the same row. So if your letter shows up two times on that row, you're going to cross it off. Let's look at the first row. Each letter that shows up two times on that row, you're going to cross it off. So, for example, the first letter is an R. I believe it's an R. Mine's already crossed out. It's either an R or a B. And it shows up two times on that line. So we're going to cross off both of them. Now do that for all the other letters that have another letter just like it. So two I's, two B's, two R's, two whatever in that same orange row. Go ahead and do it real quick. I'll give you a couple more seconds and then we'll talk about what word is left. The letters you should have left are J, O, S, E, P, H. We're going to put those for number one at the bottom. Number one at the bottom says, Who asked permission to bear Jesus' body? It was Joseph of Arimathea. So Joseph, J-O-S-E-P-H. Go ahead and write Joseph in that blank. Do you see how this works? Okay, so I want you to finish the rest of page 191. Go ahead and pause me. We'll check it when you come back. Ready? Go. Number two, who sent guards to the tomb of Jesus? That was Pilate. Number three, who came to the tomb early in the morning? That was Mary. Number four, who rolled the stone away from the door of the tomb? That is angel. Number five, what was not in the tomb anymore? Christ. And number six, which day of the week did Jesus rise? And it was the first, the first day of the week. We are going to go ahead and skip page 192. And I'm going to let you know that if you want to do page 193, 194, you may. It's totally optional. That means it's up to you. So if it's something that you want to do, good. If it's not something you want to do after I explain it, you can skip it. 
So on page 193 and 194, it says to cut out the gift package on the dark lines, then write a message on the, on the back telling someone what you will do to make that person's week better. And I thought this was perfect for this week. So it says on the back of it, this week I will. It can be anything. It can be for your mom. It can be for your dad, it can be for a brother or sister, a grandma or grandpa, anybody. It can be a neighbor. Um, just make sure you have permission before you hand it out to somebody. But you could make it for anybody that needs something done this week. So this week I will blank and you just write what you're going to do to help them on the lines. Then after you cut it out, you fold it up, you can put a little piece of tape I, it says a dot of glue, but I would say no. I would put like a little piece of tape so that it holds it closed and then give it to whoever needs something done this week. So that's shining your light, showing that you care, being godly and Christ-like for others. And if you want to do that, that's a great idea this week. So go ahead and do it if you want. But remember, it's optional. So if you're busy and you don't have a chance to do it, Put it away and save it. You might have time later. I will see you in just a few minutes for reading. Hey guys, in reading today we are finishing up our play. Um, I know it is not nearly as fun to be doing all of the parts by yourself at home or maybe with someone with you, but we are going to finish up A Dark Night today. You are going to read pages 260 to 265. So you're going to finish Act 2 of a dark night today and you'll notice as we've been talking it happens in the past it's um, historical fiction fiction based on history because it has people like Paul Revere and things like that so it happened a long time ago when we are done I want you to do page 223 and 224 in your reading workbook it is not for a grade. It just needs to be done. So go ahead and take care of that. And if you want to pause, you may, because right after this, I'm going to tell you what I want you to do for math as well. So if you need time to stop and work on reading, you can stop here. Otherwise, I'm going to go in and explain math. On math today, you are going to be doing page 271 and 272. It is um, a, maybe a new topic, but it is one that I think you can do on your own. It is using 12 as a factor. So it's your 12's facts and just going through and writing all of your 12's facts. We've learned all of them except 12 times 12. 12 times 12 is the new one. 12 times 12 equals 144, but all of your others you've learned with your facts as we went along the way. Everything else on this page is a review, so there is no math lesson online for today. This is just explaining that I need you to finish it. So in just a minute, we are going to do our drawing, and I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful Easter break. I pray that you get to spend a lot of time with your family, enjoying each other, and that it is a blessed and wonderful Easter. I love you, and I hope to see you at school soon. Talk to you later. Here, bye -bye. Buster, and draw an Easter Bunny. Yeah, we're going to draw an Easter Bunny folding surprise. Our bunny is going to be popping out of an Easter egg. We hope you're going to follow along with us. For this lesson, you need something to draw with. We're going to use markers. We always love using markers, but you could use whatever you have at home. Now, you also need some paper and something to color with. All right, let's start. Except we're going to fold first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's start by taking the top edge of our paper and folding it down to the bottom edge. Line it up. And then I always like creasing right down the middle and then out to the corners. Then we're going to take that top flap and we're going to fold that back up to the top also. Line it up down the middle and out to the corner. Then let's flip over our paper and we're going to repeat that same step. We're going to take this top flap and fold it up to the top. 
Good. Now we're going to take this top flap and we're going to unfold it. Just that last one. Then we're going to flip over our paper. Next, we're going to take scratch paper and we're going to put it under our drawing paper. That's because we're using markers and we don't want the marker to bleed through our drawing paper and get onto our table. Now we're ready to draw. We're going to first draw the grass down here on the bottom of our paper. And I'm going to draw a zigzag line and yours doesn't have to look like mine. I'm just going to draw crazy grass. There you go. All the way across. Next, we're going to draw the Easter egg. We're first going to draw the top part of our Easter egg. We're going to draw an upside down U shape. We're going to go up and then back down. And this is above the fold. Up, around. Oh, I like the shape of your egg. It's going to be awesome. Ooh, it's going to be a tall one. I like it. And skinny. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to take each side of the Easter egg and we're going to extend it down and curve into the grass. So yours probably, yeah, there you go. I like it. Then we're going to draw the same thing on the other side. Extend it down it's and then so curve long. it in. It's okay that our two drawings look different. I think your Easter egg looks perfect. The next time we draw it, we could draw a little wider. The most important thing is... To have fun. Yeah, to have fun and to... Practice. Practice. I'm sure their drawings look different too, and that's okay. All right, let's keep going. Now we're ready to open up our drawing. We're going to unfold it, and we'll flatten out the fold so it's easier to draw on. Now let's first start by finishing our egg. We're going to draw it cracked open. We're going to draw, extend the side up just a little higher on both sides down here at the bottom. Now this next part, we want to make sure that we don't draw below this bottom fold. We're going to draw a zigzag line. Watch me, we're going to draw it all the way over to the other side, but we want to make sure that those little points don't go below the fold. That's because when we fold it back up, we want it to be hidden. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to repeat that same step, except up here at the top. So let's first extend each side further down. Yeah, and then we're going to draw a zigzag line and make sure that these little points don't go above the fold. Yeah, all right, we did it. Now we're ready to draw our Easter Bunny. We're going to draw a really funny one. We're going to draw him coming up out of the bottom egg. I'm going to draw a big upside down U like that. <laughs> there we go. Good job. <laughs> so it's so skinny. I like it. And then we're going to draw little bunny ears. So I'm going to draw a curve that comes out to the side or up and out. Both sides looks like a bug. And then we're going to draw the other side of the bunny ear coming back down on both sides. <laughs> Let's draw the inside of our bunny ears. We'll draw that same shape, but smaller on each ear. Okay, let's also draw little arms sticking out. So I'm going to draw a sideways U shape over here and a sideways U shape on the right. Oh, we could also give them, let's give them a little paw. Circle on the left and a circle over here on the right. Next, let's draw his eyes. I'm going to draw a small little circle, color it in, and a small little, little circle over here and color that one in also. And then we could, oh yeah, keep going. <laughs> then we could draw his mouth. I'm going to draw a little curved W in between the eyes. If we ever go too fast, what can our friends do? Pause the video. Yeah, if we fast forward the video or if we go too fast and you need extra time, remember you can always pause the video. All right, what else should we draw? Let's make his mouth bigger. Oh, <laughs> okay, let's do that. I'm gonna draw a big <laughs> U shape for his mouth, and we could also give him bunny teeth, right? Let's. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a uh, bunny teeth. I'm gonna draw a line up at the top and then a line right down the middle, and we could also give him a tongue. It's a beaver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a bunny, but that's okay. <laughs> Now we did it, we finished drawing our bunny coming out of our Easter egg, except we still need to do one more thing. What is it? Color it. Yeah, we need to color our drawings. This part we're gonna fast forward, but remember to pause the video and take time to color your drawings also. You ready to fast forward? Yee!
Uh, so we did it, we finished coloring our folding surprise Easter egg with the bunny inside. Yeah. Should we show our friends? Yeah. All right, three, two, two one. Happy, happy Easter! Easter. <laughs> we added a bunch of extra stuff to the inside of our folding surprise. Now you guys can add whatever you want. You just wanna make sure that you draw it below the top fold and above the bottom fold. That's because when you fold it up, it's all hidden. Yeah. Really cool, huh? Mm -hmm. It looks so much better colored in. I hope our art friends are gonna take time to color their drawings also. We hope you have a lot of fun drawing your Easter folding surprise. Yeah, we do. We hope you had a lot of fun and we hope you take time to change your drawings and add even more stuff. We love you guys so much, and we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Our bunnies look like they've been eating too much candy.